Mario Balotelli. You remember him. Balotelli! A moment of madness and genius. Everything that was entertaining at that time was always Mario. Great character, great to watch, a great footballer. Yeah, what a crazy man. Madness, pure madness. Probably whatever you've heard and read at the scene about Mario is all true. Back in 2011, Balotelli led the line in one of the most memorable Manchester derbies of all time and produced perhaps the most iconic celebration in Premier League history. Why always me reads the shirt? A message from the most scrutinised player in the Premier League. We look at the story behind the shirt and attempt to answer the question, why always him? Why always me? Manchester United dominated English football for most of the 1990s and 2000s. You may have heard they won a treble in that time too. Derby Day was no different, with City and United leagues apart, quite literally. They're there winning playoff finals and Manchester United are in the Champions League final winning trebles. So I think the golfing class between the two sides before that was huge. United were always in a lose-lose situation. It was almost as if if we got anything out of those games, it was a disaster for United. The problem was they were never challenging for silverware. United were always there. But then, in August 2008, United's monopoly over footballing operations in Cottonopolis faced a new threat. Sheikh Mansour and the Abu Dhabi United group arrived to take over at Man City. You could tell instantly exactly what was going to happen at the club because the day they took over, the day they bought the club, was the final day of the transfer window and they were putting bids in all over the place. I think when they signed Rubinho and they, they started breaking their own transfer record, everyone was going to start looking around a bit and thinking this, this could be an interesting few years. They were wanted the best players in the world. They were here to challenge Manchester United. The hiring of three-time Serie A winning coach Roberto Mancini was another sign of intent, and he brought a certain someone with him from Italy. Mario Balotelli joined City for around €22 million Euros in 2010 as one of the hottest prospects in world football. Fantastic talent. I would never have classed him as the greatest team player of all time, but ability-wise, phenomenal ability. People were talking about him in the same breath as they were talking about Cristiano Ronaldo. With Mario, the excitement was about just how talented he was. Yeah, Mario was an entertaining character, top talent, but you got to remember at that time he was 21, moving away from home. Balotelli received the prestigious Golden Boy Award in 2011 as the best young player on the planet. But, in what was classic Balotelli fashion, on receiving the award, Balotelli said he had never heard of Arsenal's Jack Wilshere, the player who had finished runner-up for the award. It just goes back to that incredible list of incidents. Some true, some, you know, uh, mythology. I used to do tours of the training ground during that period, and I can remember the week that Mario left. I took this party of about 15, 16 people into the dressing room, opened Mario's door and about 30 parking tickets fell out. <laughs> the Mario Balotelli stories have since become the stuff of legend and every football fan has their favourite. For example, Balotelli apparently once confronted a school bully on behalf of a young fan who he found truanting. He even met with the school's headmaster and attempted to educate the bully in the error of his ways. This happened just weeks after he was reported to have given a homeless man £1,000 in cash. But, as per Mario, with the sublime came the ridiculous. Legend has it that when driving his sports car and being pulled over by the police, Balotelli had £25,000 on the passenger seat in cash. When asked why he was in possession of such a large amount of cash, he simply replied, because I'm rich. And where there's the ridiculous, there's also the unsavoury. There were reports of the time of Balotelli fighting with his Manchester City teammates, including Jerome Boateng and Micah Richards, as well as his own manager, Roberto Mancini. That was during a season in which he had allegedly incurred fines totalling £300,000 from the club, and wrapped up £10,000 in parking tickets, having his Maserati impounded 27 times. The tip of the iceberg could have been when Balotelli threw darts, yes darts, at Manchester City Academy players during training. You know, for fun. As I say, that could have been the tip of the iceberg if Balotelli hadn't burned down his own bathroom after setting fireworks off indoors. I should point out, these alleged incidents all occurred over the course of about 12 months, the fireworks taking place just weeks before the 23rd of October 2011, Derby Day at Old Trafford. Perhaps a bit controversial that he was in the starting lineup after everything that happened going into that week with everything to do with his fireworks, uh, and then typical Mancini backs his man, always backs his man. Balotelli, not one to shy away from any performance, had something up his sleeve, or rather, up his shirt. That particular morning, the week 
building up to the derby game, he said, look, I want you to print something on the compression shirt. Uh, and he said, I want to, this specifically for the derby game. So he came up with one or two things and I, I said, no, Mario, that, that, that's unacceptable. We can't put that on. And then all of a sudden, completely out of the blue, he said, why always me? And I thought, absolutely spot on. That was like perfect. First and foremost, I'm not even thinking about Balotelli because I'm thinking about the way we're getting moved to by City. It was a destruction from start to finish. Just absolutely slap them. Like It's just absolute carnage. City looked like they're going to score with every single attack. Bit of space here for James Milner. We'll find Mario Balotelli. It's a super finish from Balotelli. Why always me reach the shirt? When I saw that why always me, I was kind of like more like, I kind of laughed about it, I'm not even gonna lie. I, can't, I, kind of, I kind of laughed. I was like, it's not Balotelli without a moment. None of the coaches or anybody knew about it at all. W within hours, it was like all over the world. The inexplicable, the incredible Mario Balotelli. The day after we were in training, he says, get on to Umbro. Now I think Umbro was the kit we're using at the time. They're printing these shirts in the shop and everything. Now. Uh, I want commission on all this. <laughs> but So I had to ring Umbro for him and uh, Umbro said, I'm sorry, you can't pay to the words. So I had to relay the message to Mario, you can't, you're not going to get any commission for this, Mario. A 6-1 City win at Old Trafford in the Premier League, the biggest derby win in their history. The noisy neighbours were taking over the town. When he goes to Old Trafford and he scores that goal and he does that, his teammates must go, yeah, we can do this today, let's go. And that's really what it felt like. It felt like the starting gun for all the success and all the trophies. I think there's a great sense of camaraderie within the dressing room, within that squad of players. And I think throughout the season, there was that expectation that they could definitely win the Premier League. For you, is this your worst memory for the derby itself? By far. By far, it doesn't even come close. That was when you actually knew, oh, we've got a new rival here, like proper, not city rivals. We've got a title rival here. And the blue moon continued to rise. This derby win cited as a key moment in what was to come for the rest of the season. The most significant thing perhaps from this game is that they went on to win the title on goal difference. Purely from a mathematical perspective, winning that winning 6-1 meant they won the title. And then, of course, the final day of the 2011-2012 Premier League season, where Balotelli was involved in the biggest moment in Premier League history. City running out of time. Aguero, Balotelli, Balotelli stabs it back to Aguero. They've done it! Manchester City are champions of England. Sergio Aguero with City's second goal in added time. The most dramatic end to a Premier League season literally dropped on my knees the worst day as a United fan in recent, in modern history, I would say. The incredible thing is that throughout his time at City, he only did one assist and it just turns out to be the biggest goal in City's history and maybe even the biggest assist in the history of the Premier League. And again, we go back to Mario, why always me? It, again, it's for moments like that. That was the best it got in Manchester for Balotelli. After more tumultuous times, he was moved on unceremoniously from the Etihad. And despite playing for clubs the size of Milan, Liverpool and Marseille, Balotelli's legacy is one of unfulfilled potential, currently playing his trade in Turkey for Radana Demirspor, where he is still very much making headlines. Unfortunately for Man City, he didn't fulfill the potential we've all seen him have um, in training, but he won the Premier League and was part of that successful period as well. I think you look back over his, his time at City, with nothing but a smile. He brought so much personality, but also with slight regret that he didn't become the player which he could have been, which is one of the best strikers in the world. Well, that goal and, and, and that T-shirt ushered in an era that, you know, is the greatest in our history as a football club. Why Always Me is going to be played in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Anytime you're talking about the Manchester Derby, anytime you're seeing montages, there's always just that, why always me moment it's always there because it's always you it should that should be the response to that because it's always you everything that was entertaining at that time was always mario to have that t-shirt 
wrapped up in that day. It's just amazing. Those three words that are made Mario Balotelli a household name in every country in the world. He wears the flashiest clothes. He dates the baddest models. It's, it, it's just Mario Balotelli, in it? Like, it is always him. When you see this jersey, when you see this undershirt, what do you think? What, does it bring back good memories? I, I just think about me getting a from David Platt for doing it. <laughs> yeah, that shirt just, yeah, just makes me smile. It's just Mario, Mario at his best at City. That's what it is. <laughs>